Hey Floss Tube, Elena here, the Stitching Farmer. It's been a while since I've made a video. I uh, thought I was going to be able to film more videos instead of less with both my kids being in school, but I just haven't had a lot of time lately. I've been working out at the Navarre store a lot, which is about an hour drive. So I'm now permanent there. So this summer we'll probably, we're planning on moving out that way. Um, Navarre is kind of like this quaint little beach town. Um, a lot of military there. It's right next to Herbert Field. So it's a big Air Force base and then it's real close to Eglin Air Force Base too. So there's a big large military population there, which is good. Always makes you feel safe. You know, <laughs> we always have these planes flying off and you, um, all over and you hear bombings and you know, people will be like, what's that noise? And you're like, that's the sound of freedom. So yeah, we, you get used to it. When we first moved here and the house was shaking from the bombings, <laughs> it's like, oh, are we under attack? But no, that's just normal now. I don't even notice it. You just kind of, oh, I guess they're bombing. They have like so much land here that they own so much of it, the uh, military. So they, it's nice though. You can go on a lot of it. Like we take the boys fishing out there and you just got to, They'll have, they'll tell you like a few days before what's going to be off limits and what you can go on. But I think usually all the, um, the lakes are always, at least I haven't ever had a problem with going on to the, um, Eglin reservation or land. I don't know what you call it. Um, recreation area. That's what they call it. They have like several, like you can go fishing and big hunting grounds that you can use. You just buy an annual pass and then you use it all and it's, it's really nice. It's very, a lot of nature. Yeah. So very nice. So, so much going on. Um, took the kids to Disney back in September. It's been a really long time since I made my last video. So they had lots of fun and it's during the food and wine festival and then they also had the Halloween party. We didn't do the Halloween party because my youngest is three and I don't know, it's kind of expensive. So we just did the, we went to each park and they had lots of fun. And then, I guess not a whole lot that's really going on. Working a lot. Driving to Navarre every day. So that takes a lot of time. And boys are enjoying school. Oh, so Thanksgiving break. My youngest, he went Monday through Wednesday to, he went to Discovery Preschool. Tuesday of that Thanksgiving week, I got an email saying, we're sorry parents, but the day here tomorrow will be the last day, like ever. So we had a week to find him a new daycare. And uh, it was such a nightmare, but we got him a new daycare, it's, or a preschool. It's a good, it's in Valparaiso, which is like on the other side of town but we both drive by there every day. So one of them usually just drops us, drops them off on the way over. But I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like two, day, two days before Thanksgiving, they tell us that we're sorry, the daycare is closing down, but it's not like there's some shenanigans going on. I don't know but what all is going on. But so he's got a new daycare. He seems happy there. And so far he's happy. And then my second grader is Today's his last day of school before Christmas break, so he's super excited. <laughs> he wore his pajamas yesterday to school. He told me that morning, say, Mom, tomorrow's pajama day, or today's pajama day, and I'm wearing my mind, he had on his Minecraft little jumper, and I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yes. So he gets off the bus that afternoon, my husband picked him up, and he's like, so it's tomorrow that's pajama day. And Mike was like, oh, so you're the only one in pajamas? He's like, yeah. And he's like, did everyone laugh at you? He's like, yeah, <laughs> but he's, he's a cool kid. So he didn't really care. He just kind of like brushed it off probably. So let's see, I'm getting ready for Christmas. I got all my Christmas shopping done for the kids. They're super excited. My little one, he's so cute. He's only three and he's so excited. He, he keeps wanting this Luigi's Mansion game for the um, Nintendo Switch. So one of the presents under the tree is wrapped just like it. And that is what it is. And 
He's like, mom, can I open this? I'm like, no, you have to wait for Christmas. He's like, it is Christmas. Look outside, the lights are on. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. So the boys are really excited for Christmas. And so I got all the presents wrapped under the tree and everyone's excited, so. And, and so getting the Navarre store at work, uh, um, pharmacist there, the st staff pharmacist is big deal excited that I got that position. So now we get to move out that way, hopefully next summer. I'm sad, I love this house, but we've outgrown it. So it's got three bedrooms and I could usually really use a fourth bedroom because I've got so much stuff. And my husband doesn't want to hear it, but he's like, you need to, you know, get rid of some stuff and weed it out. I'm like, no. <laughs> he's like, I'm like, all my stuff fits in a box. He's like, stop calling our house a box. Yeah, I'm sure y'all have all seen that meme, but that's how I feel like he thinks. So anyways, um, get to cross-stitch stuff. Uh, let's see, so I figure first I share, let's see. Um, I've given up on my stitch nine. I think I finished two of them. So at least I got that far. I don't know what I'm going to do for 2020 yet. I was trying to come up with something, but. So this one was one of my Stitch 9 projects. And this is how far I got on it. <laughs> At least I made a start. It's really cute. A little, little tree. Sorry, glare. Tree beach scene. So dimensions gold. Since it's completely stitched, I just went ahead and stitched it on the Ada. But I wanted to share with you how, what I do with my string. So. Dementors used to come all wrapped up as like one big wad of threads and you'd have to sort them out yourself. They would like have like a pink yarn and a green yarn and then you just sort it based on that. So now they've started putting it on these cards like this. So all of the threads were glued to right here. So what I do is I cut all those threads off. And then on the other side is I punch holes all through there and then I can just thread them through there that way. So that's how I do my um, thread like that. I just get a hole puncher and just punch the other side. And you see where I cut it off there. So that's how I do my threads and try to keep it a little bit neat. share that little tip so maybe next Christmas I'll have it done wishful thinking let's see what else have I been working on oh, I love this little just Nan owl I was gonna start this one first Let me take out the... is she not just the cutest little what do they call her little princess snow her little owl eyes. She's got the got a little crown in there and a little sequence for her eyes. There she goes again. Ah, can't get rid of the glare. I'm having to film on the other side of the table so you get to see my missing messy living room. <clears throat> So, let me, sorry, let me stop it for a second. All right, I'm back. Okay, so I meant to grab this before I started filming, but I forgot. So, um, one thing I'm working on is this frosty snow cube. I took it out of the plastic so it doesn't have the terrible glare. But look at, is this not adorable? I just love it. Let me see if I can unhook it here. Yeah. So this is pretty small, so I just decided to do it on my Q-snap. Look at how tiny, I just love it. Little tiny trees, little tiny birds. So one thing, um, I completely lost my train of thought. I don't even remember what I was gonna say, but. Oh, so the back stitching. So I used to be one of the, my mom always told me, wait till the end to do all the backstitching. 
now I've learned that that's just a terrible idea because by the end I'm ready to be done and so now I backstitch as I go. So I am completely done with each section that is done. I just started this um, this bottom section here. So this is the top and this will be the bottom. And so each one of the ones with the scarves is the sides. So I had just started, so I've done the top and so now I'm doing the sides. And then down the bottom will be the, um, what it sits on is the bottom piece. Cause you actually do stitch all six sides instead of just leaving one open. I'm guessing it is easier, it'll be easier to enclose that way. Having a six sided box instead of the five since it's not, you know, it's stitched on linen, so it's not real stiff. And then to go with it is, I'll take it out so I get the glare, is, do I not bring this over here? Well, his name is Frosty Chillingsworth, Mr. Frosty Chillingsworth, the little mouse that sits there. And I have completely finished stitching him. Is he not the cutest? Little scarf and the little cardinal birds, little ears and nose. So I haven't finished him yet. <laughs> I've read over the instructions like 10 times on how to do it. I'm just so intimidated by it, but maybe I'll work on it tonight. I don't know, I'm just, I have, I did cut it out, as you can see, but uh, just a little intimidated about how to put it together and stuff it. I got the stuffing and everything. And, oh, let me show you one other thing, sorry. It's just right here. So this is like the accessory pack to go with them. It's got Cutest, this is his little tail. This is like a little wire. Super cute. And look at his little top hat. Is that not adorable? Little mouse top hat. Top hat. Yeah. And then um, his base is in there and his arms too. This is what he will sit on there. I think they're real cute. I know a lot of people are burned out on them, the mouse, the mice, because just Nan, she has designed a lot of mice lately. So I think I had some of them in my um, the collection here that I was gonna share. Oh, let's see, where was it? Oh, the scissor roll. So she's done spring, summer, and fall, or autumn. And so this is the autumn one. I can't wait to see the winter one. But this one is my favorite. I just think it's so adorable. I saw some people in Australia, they were putting it on little like wooden dowels. I thought that was a really cute idea. I guess someone's husband's making them. I don't know if my husband could do that though. He's got like a whole collection of tools out there in the garage and I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him, show him a picture of him and be like, you think you can make this for me? Yeah, we'll see. Um, let's see, I was gonna share. Um, so this has been in my stash for a really long time. I've actually started it like a long time ago, back in, I was actually in college still, I was an under, undergrad, so it would have been like, probably 2004. And I pulled it out and the fabric had really yellowed, I guess the oil for my hands or something. So I ended up just tossing it. But I'd like to try to do it again because I did save the instructions and I don't know if I want to use, this gold metallic thread is really hard to work with. It just, if it's just like one piece, it's okay, but usually you have to mash it up with a piece of DMC and it just twists and just, it's hard to work with. But I really love these. These are one of my, probably my favorite ornaments that Dimensions has done. I really love the real bright and bold colors. So this is Timeless Elegance Ornaments. But <sighs> there is a lot of, looks like couching in that with the gold metallic thread. It's such a pain doing it with the metallic. Um, this is also a new release from Dimensions. 
a new Santa. A lot of their new releases lately haven't been very cute, but I do like this one. It says Believe. Let me try to get the glare. So maybe, I think I will stitch this one on linen. There's a lot of um, non-stitch space there. I'd rather not see the, the holes from the Ada. So I might change that over. I got one of my unicorn charts, super excited. Got it for less than $100 um, off of eBay, Christmas Cove. This one has been one of my unicorn charts for a long time. So I was so excited to finally get it. Maybe I can make it a 2020 stitch. Uh, let's see, what else? This one I really wanna stitch. So badly, I want to start it. I'm sure everyone's seen this one if you're a Mirabilia fan. It's the Garden Prelude. I really like her on the um, the natural linen, so I decided to. That's what I'm going to stitch on. Except that I got the one flecked with metallic, so it's got gold metallic flecks in there. So I really. So that's what I'm planning on stitching her with. And I've got the, the bead pack here. Not like terribly many beads. There's only five different color packs. I thought the two were the same, but no, they're, they're all different. I think they're mostly in the flowers, so. I just love her dress. It is just so pretty. And then she's got, um, there's some silks and some of the, these get expensive. I think they're like six or seven dollars a piece. So they start adding up quickly, but I love stitching with the silks. So pretty. But these are the, um, Water Lilies by Karen. And then she only has one little crinic, oh. So last video, I said something about a tool that I use to get straighten it. I don't remember the exact wording I use, but it's a straightener, a little mini straightener, $10 off of Amazon. So when you pull this off the spool, it gets really curly. So you use this and it get, and it's straightens it just like your hair. Not that I ever use it on my hair, but I use this more for cross stitching than I ever have it on my own hair. I just kind of like a wash and go person, go, wash and go girl. I just well, kind of like dried a little bit, but <sighs> I've never really spent a whole lot of time on. I used to color it back when I was younger. I used to color it blonde. But it's such a pain to keep having to touch up all the time. So now it's just my natural hair color. I figure once it starts going gray, I'll start coloring it again, but until then, I'm not going to worry about it. I told my hairstylist I'm not coloring it until I have to. <laughs> some people can rock that, you know, that gray white hair. Hopefully someday I will too. Let's see what else. Oh, so Kathy, my friend, she sent me a couple charts. She also sent me the um, a Chatelaine beautiful design. And I, I couldn't find it. I'll find it for next video, but it was the um, Autumn Water Garden. It's just so beautiful of a design, all those, the Water Garden series. Is. But um, she also sent me um, this Blackbird from, it's from the Loose Feathers series. And then a Jeanette Douglas. I really enjoy her designs too. Very pretty. I like that too. So what else was I going to share with you guys? Oh, I was going to share my shadowing. I was really hoping to have this done by the end of the year, but as you can see, it's not quite there yet. So this is the back side of the palace. So I'm not quite done with the building yet. Hope you can see it good there. So I've still got 
to fill in the rest of this. And then of course backstitch it. There's quite a bit of backstitching. And the last gate on the bottom. And then there is a bunch of like um, trees in that that goes all the way around. I really love these corners. I think they're so pretty in the ribbons, which um, it has like that wo woven look, the lattice. That I still gotta put on there too in gold. I don't remember if I showed you guys look really closely at this, the, uh, so heavy, I can't hold it with one hand, but right there is like the symbol for Louis the, I can't remember which one he was, 14th or 16th, the sun, the sun king, it's a symbol. I bet that used five different colors of gold, like a dark gold, a light gold, a medium gold, so many, and you're stitching it over one, so. That was fun. And then I've still got to do all the beading too. And there's quite a bit, not as much as my sparkling peacock, which I brought down to share with you guys. So I was like, you know what? The first time I ever showed it, I didn't do a good job. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't realize that you're supposed to turn this phone sideways and to get the full length. So I thought I was, I brought it down to show you guys again. Um, let's see. So. I've gotten into quilting a little bit. I've never, I've never done it before, but I was watching Priscilla and Chelsea and she was showing the beginner quilt. And I was like, oh, I would really love to try that. You guys might not be into it, I don't know, but it was actually a lot of fun. I've never done it before and I really enjoyed it, but I just wanna just share with you because I have completely finished it. Let me move this chair out of the way for a minute. So, I think it's supposed to go this way. So there is the whole quilt. I did it from start to finish, binding and everything. I did three motion quilting on it. So I don't you probably can't really see it that much, but. I bought just a cheap sewing machine because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. Just to try it out. And I just, you know, it was a brother. It was like $100 off of Amazon. And it's just not the best quality. So I've been trying to talk my husband into a, um, I've fallen in love with wanting a Bernina sewing machine. And I told him the price and he was like, that's as much as a used car, like a nice used car. I was like, but I like it, you know, I love it. I wanted the Tulip Pink Bernina 770 and that's a lot of money. I couldn't believe when I saw, I got sticker shock the first time I ever saw it. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, but maybe someday, maybe once he starts working and you know, we're all settled in our new house, maybe. And also, I love this pattern, the Sawtooth um, Star. So this is a, um, it was a free pattern. If anyone's interested, you know, just comment if you want and I can see if I can find the pattern because I can't remember. But this is, um, this isn't cotton fabrics. This is batik fabrics. So it's a little bit, a little stiffer. Um, I guess it's more tightly woven. I really like the, the soul tooth pattern. And so let's see, was there anything else I was going to show you before I was going to turn it around? I don't think so. All right, so I'll turn it around and I'll show you my sparkling peacock. Okay, so here we are flipped around with sparkling peacock. So this lives under my bed. It is in a box though, plastic box. And as you can see, it's been folded up. Uh, I'll have to I really want to send it to Joel Rensel um, framing to get it framed. So hopefully when we're a little bit more settled next year, I will do that. But I have to say this was such a fun stitch. Every stitch was just such a joy. Look at these colors. How could you not love stitching with these colors? I think that's the one thing, the struggle I'm having with stitching Versailles is colors just aren't as vibrant. 
Got the that's a flower medallion there. Uh, also these neat little cube. See all the specialty stitches. Look at all these beads. I know this isn't the most heavily beaded, but it's up there of the um, Shadowland designs. Look at that. All the eyelets, the roads. Just beautiful stitches. It was so much fun to stitch. Look at this metal here. All of that is beads. Look at all of this. I love stitching the centers of the mandalas. Not that I've stitched that many, only, only three, you know. <laughs> this was just such a pleasure to stitch. Let's see if I can zoom out here and get the whole thing going. There we go. It was so much fun to stitch this. Hopefully next time you see it, it will be in a frame. All right, so I was gonna show you my Christmas stocking, so. All right, so here we are in, by the fireplace with the stockings. These were all Dimensions kits. I think they all took about six months to do too. So. This is mine. I have to say this one's probably my least favorite of them. Next is Logan's, my oldest son. Just look at the detail on this couch. Couching. Couching is where you take a piece of thread and then you tack it down with another. This one's my favorite. My youngest son, Holden. Lots of couching on this one too, if you see all the gold thread there. And then my husband's. His was the one I stitched first. I think I stitched his, it was probably 2009. Right about the time we got married. Oh, my dog is snoring down here. Let's see if I can get her. Hi, Lola. Hi, pretty girl. She's happy to have me home. So I still have <laughs> my autumn stuff as. My husband liked where the Christmas garland was and he said it was up in the attic, so I don't know if it's going to come down before Christmas. That is that. Oh, and then I was going to show you my Christmas village. I won't show you my whole house because it's a mess, but... And here is my Christmas village. So this is what happens when you're a boy mom. You have a Lego Christmas village. So here we have the train station. And the train. And I have super glued these, like the dad and the Lego movie. I'm like, if I spend this much time putting these together, then it's staying together. This is the firehouse. A really cool little feature is that it lights up. And then this is the most recent, the gingerbread house. And it also lights up with the little fireplace there. If you ever, I don't know if you ever put one of these together, but it's pretty impressive. Like the, just the attention to detail that they do. They're not cheap though. But this is my Lego village. This one had more to it, but my kids pried it off. 
Same with the fire station. I think the kids probably some of that off too. No, it looks pretty together. I know the truck they did. So that is my Christmas village. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. I don't think I'll get to film another video before the new year. Hopefully by then I'll decide what my 2020 goals will be. So everyone have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'll, I'll see you in 2020.